Okay. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon um, or good evening or good morning, um, depending on where you are. Thank you very much um, for taking the time uh, to join us. Um, I'm really excited um, to be given the opportunity to do this. Um, I'm really keen, um, a big, big fan of learning and development and particularly um, supporting managers so I've kind of um, taken the lead on this so I have prepared um, a presentation and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen okay I'm going to press the um, present button so my screen will get really big so I won't see the chat but um, as I say I'm really excited I am a little nervous as well, so please tell me if I start talking too fast um, or if I say something that doesn't make sense, please shout at me and tell me to slow down or take a breath um, and uh, hopefully that will solve the uh, little bit of jitters um, that I have. Will shouting at you make you less nervous, Ali? <laughs> um, probably not. It might make me go a bit redder, but uh, it, should, uh, it should help my nerves a little bit. Okay. It will be so, fine, Abby. Yeah. It's all friends. <laughs> um, so this is a joint collaboration between uh, Sid and myself. We've gone back, um, taken a look at the previous uh, management development agenda and decided that we wanted to make this more relevant um, to GitLab, more actionable, um, and to be able to provide you with some further resources um, and also share um, in this session, get a chance for you to tell us a bit more um, about your experiences um, and to share um, your ideas for any um, improvements um, that you've discovered with doing one-to-ones um, and giving feedback. So the plan, um, there's going to be two speakers, myself and Sid. I'm going to be taking um, the first two parts. I'll be talking a little bit about one-on-ones um then i'm going to be going on to talk about how to give feedback then i'm going to stop and i'm going to pass the microphone over to sid um after that we're going to jump back and and if you're looking at the presentation you'll see there is a slide um on discussion we're going to ask you a few questions so this is your chance to um jump in and um tell us a bit more about um your experiences and then we'll give you um, some further reading and we'll talk about uh, plans for the next session. So one-on-ones, um, I'm gonna answer the first question and then the other three I'll talk about uh, in the next slide. So why are they important? Well, um, this may seem like an obvious question, but at GitLab, as we all know, everybody works remotely. And most of the time, our interactions are done um, via written communication. And it's sometimes difficult um, to know that there's a person uh, on the other end um, of the screen and on the other end of the conversation. And particularly with your um, team members, you know, you'll be chatting on Slack or whatever. You kind of have a good idea of what they're working on, if they have any immediate um, actions or points that they need your help on. They'll jump on Slack um, and you'll hear from them straight away. Um, but you might not have a good sense um, of the other things that they might be working on or what they're thinking about, perhaps, in terms of you know, their challenges or um, their career development or um, you know, what's going on. Um, you know, what are they thinking about and how can you motivate them? Um, these are all the types of things that's very hard to do um, when you work remotely. So the FaceTime, and it is really FaceTime, even though it's usually um, via video, is, is really important for that connection. Um, so that's why they're really um, important, um, particularly in our setting. So one-on-ones at GitLab. So ideally, you should be meeting with your direct re reports once every two weeks um, for an hour. Now, obviously, depending on the size of your team, that might be too much. Um, it might be not enough. Um, and you really should be prepared um, and take notes, um, but try to keep it informal. There should be a conversation. 
Um, it shouldn't be something that's like a performance review type situation. It should be fairly relaxed, fairly informal. Um, I would obviously have an agenda because it is a, it is a meeting and we like to have agendas um, at GitLab. And you can perhaps use the headings that I've put there, work in progress, um, things that they're working on, any challenges that they've encountered. Um, it's a good opportunity to talk about career development. Um, and also it's a chance for you to ask them questions and for them to ask you questions. So if you come into a new team um, as a manager at GitLab, it's a good, it's a good idea to um, obviously invite them to a one-to-one, -one, but also um, in the invitation, just explain to them a little bit about why you're doing it, um, what it's for, the purpose of it. Um, and tell them, you know, it's going to be a conversation, but we're going to be, I'm going to be taking notes so that when we meet again, um, we're able to keep things going. And the idea of it is that before you know it, it does become a natural part um, of everyday working life. Um, the other part of one-to-ones is also, it's an opportunity to give feedback. Um, I guess the, the as we all know, there's probably, arguably, I should say, there are two types of feedback, positive and negative. Um, and when you're giving uh, feedback, it is a good idea to keep it balanced. And what I mean by that is that it shouldn't all just be negative feedback. If you can try to sandwich it, so you start off perhaps with a positive, have some negative feedback in the middle, and then finish it with positive feedback but also focusing on the future in terms of this wasn't so great but in the future this is how we're going to um, improve this so it's important to balance um, feedback the second part know your team and what I mean by this is that everybody is different everybody responds to things differently um, it's important um, to consider that people in your team don't all come from the same country. They may respond to things differently. There may be um, people who respond to public displays um, of feedback and people who don't, and they prefer it to be kept um, privately, positive um, feedback as well. So it's important that you're aware um, of people in your team and how they approach things, particularly um, with feedback. Be specific, um, don't beat around the bush, keep it um, as direct um, and specific as possible, possible and also um, factual, which is really, really important, so that um, the person who's receiving the feedback has a reference point. So if you've made a note of when something has happened, um, they can then go away perhaps and check and then come back to you or they can check their emails or check the issue or check the comment um, that popped up. The next thing is to listen. Um, the person that you're giving the feedback to, if it's negative feedback, um, they might not respond, um, they will respond, um, and it's important that you're listening so that um, you may have it wrong. There may be, there may be a situation um, that they're explaining to you that you might not be aware of. Again, we all work remotely. Um, we're not aware usually of people's day-to-day -day, um, activities or what they've been working on, what they've encountered. Um, and I also think it's important to remember that even though we all work remotely, we usually work from home. So people are in their homes. It can feel a little bit strange um, at times to think that I'm at home, but yet I'm surrounded with all my personal things, as you can see in my case, behind me, um, but I'm talking to people who I work with from my home. So it's important um, to consider that when you're preparing to give feedback. And you, as the person giving the feedback, should also be prepared to receive feedback. And that is not an easy thing to do. Um, it takes practice. Um, and if you can listen, as I said, um, and think before you respond um, that's really important finally I just want to go to the 
GitLab collaboration value in the handbook. And I'm not going to repeat, obviously, what it says there, but I want to point it out because it does mention um, important things about giving feedback effectively, saying thanks, um, and also um, some guidance on one-to-ones. So when in doubt, please refer to the handbook um, to get some good information um, on things as well. So I think it's Sid's turn. Sid, over to you. Thank you, Abby. Um, I was thinking about taking over the screen sharing. Um, maybe not. Maybe you can uh, share the screen again, uh, or can you can you put it in presentation mode again? Mm -hmm. So everyone. If you could go to, not to the website, because I pushed some changes just last minute. So there's a link in the chat, there's a link in the presentation. And because the website takes a few minutes or takes over half an hour to deploy, uh, let's look at the file in our repository. So it should say gitlab.com in your URL, not about gitlab.com. So where Abby had the general picture, I wanna go down a bit in the specifics of how I'm conducting my one-on-ones. And uh, I heard Paul remark the other day to an investor that uh, we get done in uh, 25 to 50 minutes, what he used to get done in three hours with other people. So I, I found it to be an efficient uh, format. I'm gonna go over the points one by one. Uh, first one, the, the meeting should be 25 minutes long. Um, I don't do it with everyone, but Paul, they're longer, but. I, I kind of like the half hour meetings. Um, there should be a Google Doc and it should be shared exclusively with the two team members. Um, this should never be a public document. It should never be shared with anyone else. Um, what I found really important is that the key results from the OKRs are at the top of the document. Um, so this is like, it should be clear. This is the focus, this is the priority. The agenda is just stuff we wanna chat about. Like we're a remote company, you're not gonna have, um, you're gonna, not gonna have that casual office conversation like, hey, did you see this, did you see that? So that's what our agenda for is. It's like, it's what we wanna talk about. It's not what is important. And I didn't do a good job of that. And I led some people astray in the past who thought the agenda was what they should focus on because that's apparently what I wanted to talk about. Um, it's not, I want you, as, a, as a manager, you should, uh, the OKR should be what people focus about. Um, Andrew says, uh, you share it with senior managers. Um, I, I don't have that problem because I, um, that would be board members, that would be kind of weird. Um, but what I did, I think one time I, that I can remember, I shared it with a board member, but I first asked for their permission. So one of our, um, I'm not sure where it is in our documentation, but it says that look, keep negative feedback as to, to just a person involve no one else. And it's, it's going to be a one-on-one. -on -one, so it's, it's going to have all the negative feedback that there is. It's going to be in this one. Like it's, it shouldn't be in group settings, et cetera. It should be in this one. So, um, yep. Thanks, uh, Andrew, for pacing that. So I think it's not good to, it should be a, a personal relationship and it should be based on trust. And it's hard. It's so hard to receive like negative feedback. So anything you can do to make it easier, um, you should do it. So I, I would, I would stop sharing with senior managers and I would ask for their permission, like to share like a PDF or something like that. I wouldn't do it on an ongoing basis. However, I'm not you, I'm not managing at your level. We could amend this and then I look forward to the merge request to give some uh, argumentation. Um, so the key results, uh, I try to review it 
every other week, I'm, I'm still in the beginnings of doing this. I might fail from time to time, but um, I try to like point, start the meeting with, uh, with the key results every other meeting. Now for every item on the agenda, it starts with a, a tag and it's, it's exclusively one of these tags. It's a to-do, it's a for your information, it's an ISO date, uh, a discuss or done. So the to-do is, it's something the report should do. A for your information is like, you wanna say something to someone else, you wanna make sure they saw it, it's not urgent, so you're not going to use Slack for them and distract them. Uh, and it's something that can be removed outside of the meeting. Like if they have a question after that, they can leave it on, but other, otherwise they can just remove it. And isolate means this thing is like something external in the world has to happen or needs more time or something like that. It's something we shouldn't discuss. So you should set it at the date and until that month or that exact date has arrived, you're not going to discuss it. You both agree it's not worth uh, discussing until that date because apparently there's something blocking it and it could be a capacity thing or anything else. So um, with many of my reports, I'm able to go over the entire agenda, even though it's 40 items, because like 25 of them have an ISO date that is in the future. So we don't need to discuss it. Discuss means say it is something we should chat about um, before we, we can do anything. And done is like, I think this is done. Um, and in that case, the, the person who didn't, who didn't do the work will remove it. So many times I put something on there, the report does the work and I remove it. And then frequently I want to check like there, there many times there's an edit or a merge request or something in there that I want to see whether the intention of my request was understood. Um, so people add items to the bottom of the agenda. So the agenda is a numbered list in Google Docs. So I don't think that says it, um, so I'll add that. And we prefix any items with our names. So if I put a coin down our agenda, it will say discuss, Sid, column, and then the item. So I try to make an example uh, below. So it would be discuss, Sid, should be, it should be, should we, should we look into a collaboration with Walmart? And then assume, as when someone responds to use a hash rocket and says, and then prefix it with their name and say, I don't think so, etc. This prevents you from having to have common threads or have, having to look at the history to see who did what. Um, many items spin into sub bullets all the way we found. I don't think we went over the alphabet, but some of the some of the items like take up half a page, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. Um, the the calendar item for the meeting should obviously include a link to the agenda, and we use uh, Google Comments to signal urgency. So normal, we shouldn't, we don't use comments to discuss something because it's, it's not a nice interface. Things tend to get lost. So use hash rockets and, and indentation for that. Um, I'm taking, uh, I'm taking a few notes of things I want to improve. Um, but it's basically, you just add mention them. So they get an email like, Hey, this is something you should probably be aware of before the meeting or should take quicker action on. It can't wait until the meeting. Um, we link relevant issues in Google Docs and we do not use like Google Docs hyperlinks. We just paste the full URLs. That makes it a lot easier to see like which repo it is in, which number it in, uh, to copy paste stuff. Um, no need to, to do something fancy. And very important, both parties add stuff to the agenda. So preferably the majority is added by the uh, team member. Um, if I put more than half of the items in there, it's an indication that something is wrong. Um, also when, uh, when it becomes too long, that's also an indication that something is wrong.
then a few pointers from high output management, which uh, I recommend each and every one of you read. Um, so a key point about the one-on-one, -on -one, it should be regarded as the subordinates meeting with an agenda and tone set by him or her issues that preoccupy and nag the subordinate. Well, apart from, I'd rather use him and her and not say subordinate, but report. But um, apart from the, the, the language which we might change, um, this is important and I'm not doing a super good job, but preferably you have your report work through the agenda. And it will take a bit of time in the beginning or, like to get used to the format. Um, but I, I think if, if, if you can have them walk through it, like them lead the meeting, it's just better. They, they, they will feel more empowered. Um, then another good point in high output management is that the frequency and the length of the meeting and the amount of detail might depend on their, uh, I think it's called task, uh, task, task uh, maturity. So sometimes I have someone, um, at, uh, not now, but I, it used to be when I had someone that was struggling, was just new to the company, I'd even move them to like a daily meeting, which is intense for them. Um, and then for some of my, for I think one report that um, that is very able to like determine their own path and that I just don't need to coordinate a lot with, I can do like, I can be in a two weekly schedule. So the frequency can depend a bit on their maturity. Also the, um, uh, the length of the meeting and, and maybe the amount of detail you put into it. Um, what, it, what is a bit weird in remote companies is that you can um, that you can have like pretty trivial things on the agenda, which are not really important and would be stuff that otherwise would just come up in conversation. And they're still here on an agenda, black and white. Um, so I, I think that's something that people have to get adjusted to. Like not everything on the agenda is important. Um, it's it's just also sometimes like having a conversation, yeah, making conversation, not making. Uh, it's not small talk, but it's it's not uh, um, super important things either. And and those would in other companies would happen in the hallway conversation. But we our hallway here, you're you're not going to meet any GitLab people. So that's why we uh, that's why we put it on the agenda. Um, Bill Campbell, a uh, great executive coach, um, also has some ideas about the one-on-one. Also like have both people put stuff on there. He, he likes to go over the list before the meeting starts. Um, and he thinks that there are four topics that are important to discuss, performance on the job, relationship with peer teams, leadership and innovation. Um, I don't, we just discuss anything that comes up. We're mostly able to go to anything. Just I don't do this calling of, of what we should talk about. Um, obviously, many times I want to put something on there. I see they already added it or vice versa. Performance on the job, that's just consists of a lot of items. Relationships with peer teams. Um, many times there's, had, there's like stuff I should do I should talk with, with someone else that, uh, uh, to resolve. So that comes up. Leadership is about like, who's, who's doing well, who's not doing well, who needs coaching, who needs, who needs feedback. And innovation is our business. So lots of items about innovation all the time. Um, let's go over the chat. Martin says that works and works well. Uh, Pan and uh, can you elaborate a bit on that? Yep, it was a uh, point fourteen, uh, sub point one uh, from high output management. Cool, thanks. 
Mark Punsek, if you have negative or positive, giving it right away. Uh, not waiting for the one on one. Mark, you want to elaborate on that a bit? Yeah, um, I mean, pretty much what I just said there, but um, I don't know. I read this some time ago and it actually helped a lot. Like, if you wait until the one on one, whether it's weekly or bi weekly, um, people forget the examples of, you know, whatever caused the negative feedback um, are often forgotten. You know, there's a whole, you know, recency thing involved there. Um, but also just you don't want to let something, you know, bad behavior continue for a week and a half until you correct it. So, um, you know, if you see something you need to correct, schedule a meeting or, or you know, you can't pull them aside because we're not uh, live. But um, connect with that person right away. Don't wait for the one-on-one -on -one, um, and make sure you give that feedback right away while it's fresh and they can actually discuss it. I used to have a lot of one-on-ones where... I'd be like, yeah, you did this thing. I don't remember the details. You're like, well, I don't know what to do. If you can't even point when it happened, you know, it's not very useful. And then also just to reiterate, you already said this uh, in the, the link, um, but the one-on-one -on -one is mainly for the subordinate. So if you're using it for your time to give your feedback, you're sort of robbing them and shifting the focus subtly from their, you know, their time. Um, and I really always like to tell people, you know, beginning of these things that like, this is your time, whatever you want to talk about, that's what we're going to talk about. I know that uh, contradicts what Bill Campbell said, but that's what I do anyway. Is there something I could do better too? Probably, yep. Cool, thanks for that. Any other comments or suggestions people want to make here? So can that be kept for discussion or can I ask now or can I say now? Yeah, we can go straight into the discussion. This is a... Okay. Yeah, let's do um, it. Well, one of the things that I found very helpful was um, uh, I have a team that's not really... Um, Engaging, basically, they are they're more uh, um, um, like to get uh, things done. So um, what I found useful in one on one is having a bullet points at the very top uh, with some suggested topics to think about. And um, the topics are, um, it, did anything important happen since the last one on one or something that you think is important since the last one on one? Um, what kind of, did you see any potential troubles for the team? So any problems that you might have noticed? Um, also for the company and what do you think went well and what didn't go so well um, in the, like since one on one, since the last one on one? And what can I do to make your work easier? And is there anything in the non-working um, part of your life that uh, can influence your work or something that you want to give a heads up to? And what I found was that giving those topics um, made, uh, made people think about one-on-one -on -one, uh, before the meeting, and that uh, caused a lot more discussions in the one-on-one -on -one than I had uh, before. Hey, Marin, that's pretty helpful. This is Hayden. Um, I was just making a list here of, um, I asked myself the question just on a scratch pad here. What does the team member expect from a one-on-one? -on -one? And I just write down the things that you mentioned, Marin. Important things since the last one-on-one, -on -one, problems for the team or the company, what's working, what's not working, influences on work performance. Um, I guess if this is the team members kind of meeting, what do, you, what do we all think that they expect from it? I had a few other things that, um, I noted just at the start of the meeting about, you know, helping them resolve challenges. Um, maybe they, they want to know, uh, how they're performing. I probably would. Um, are they on track to meet their career goals? Th things of that nature. I just want to open that up to see what other people think that a team member wants from a one-on-one. -on -one. Thanks, Aidan. I think it's probably a good idea. I know we're talking about this, which is great. Um, 
and I don't want to duplicate, but I think it probably is a good idea to have a, a doc with all of these suggestions in. So what I'll do is I'll copy the chat. No, no doc. No, no doc. doc. This uh, needs to end up at the website, Abby. So we'll, uh, we'll uh, put make merge requests to add this. I'll already, I've already copied these suggestions. So if people can drop more in the chat, I'll make sure to add those. Um, okay, I wasn't going to just leave them in the dark. I was going to just put them there and then. But yeah, just um, so anything that needs to end up in the website, we should never take the intermediate step of having a doc for them. It's it's in our communication guidelines, and I've seen it. I've seen it create a lot of extra work. Uh, so I'm, I'm I'm a bit more strict about reminding people of of this and of rem telling it here because I I know that. Uh, you're you're not the only one. Everyone is struggling with this. So never use a doc as a as a as an in between step for something that should up end up at the website. What you see is that people are like improve adding stuff to the doc and at the same time at the website. Like there's no there's no single source of truth anymore, um, and that and it just creates all kinds of friction. So thank you very much, Sid, for the for the feedback. That's actually a good. A good example of uh, feedback for me in the moment. Um, so, yeah, that wasn't planned, by the way. Um, <laughs> we didn't plan that. That's like a kind of live example for and you. It's, there. <laughs> it's an example of, of a win, as in giving direct feedback. Also, an example of a fail, giving feedback in a group setting instead of on a one on one basis. But that's okay. Uh, it's me. It's, it's okay. <laughs> hey, Joe made a nice comment in the uh, chat there about. Um, you know, it's a tendency to focus on issues and challenges. Don't forget to recognize accomplishments and their successes. So that's a, that's a good point. I do try yeah, to do that. I, I, forgot, I forgot a tag and I'm not using it enough, but I'll add it to the list of tags. And that's the thanks tag. Like, thank you for this. Thank you for that. Kristen says, I'd like to ask what I could be doing better as a manager. I'll, um, I'll add that. I, I tend to ask a really open question at the end, and I'm interested in what my reports, I assume some of them are in this meeting, think about it. And I just ask, how can I make your life better? Which is pretty generic instead of how can I be a better manager? Obviously, all of the points are for me to be a better manager, but I want to kind of ask a really open question so so that they're so that it can be anything from like uh, uh, a problem they're facing in life to like feedback for me as a manager but without throwing up that barrier like how you're going to give me feedback and I might frown upon that what do uh, what do my reports think of that pretty broad question I think it may be a question that's worth having people think about before the meeting because if you get called on the spot, it may feel like being put on the spot. <laughs> ah, this is a really interesting one. Um, what is, I think it's in high output management and it's about having really short meetings. And what NG says, I think, is that if you have a really short meeting, you kind of don't warm up enough to start talking about those harder topics. Um, so it's, you know how there's all kinds of detectives where they I, I think of Colombo, which is a European thing, where they kind of walks away and then he turns around one last time and asks this like inconsequential question. Journalists use this trick too. Use it too as a manager, like have the hardest question, the stuff that's hardest to talk about, have it at the end. Don't force them to put it in a doc, but have this like, oh, anything I can do to make your life better? And very frequently, I, I hear the most, the hardest to talk about subjects after that question. Um, so it's, it's not that I don't want them to think about it up front, uh, but it's, I'll, I'll, I'll add some documentation about, about this. You know, just as the meeting started, I started to make some notes about um, what team members expect from us as a manager, uh, which I think this kind of topic is going into. But then I, I left it alone because this was the, the focus was uh, about one-on-ones. 
Um, so then I changed it to what does the team member expect from a one-on-one? -on -one? But I think there is a larger question about what the team members expect from us as a manager. We probably should all be on the same page. You know, I wrote things like responsiveness, uh, set clear expectations, enable autonomy, manage career development, motivate, uh, open, open door, provide constructive feedback, just things like that. It does make a lot of sense. Abby, how, how we're gonna, should we capture that on this? Are we gonna have a session about this? I'm not sure where to, where to put these things. Um, I think it's probably a good idea. Um, in fact, I'll scroll down. I'm skipping ahead a little bit, but there is a, there is an issue on slide nine. There's a link to an issue there for um, future topics um, that we want to discuss. Um, and this is obviously, you know, we want to make this like these sessions like this, where everyone is um, contributing um, with their thoughts, their experience. Um, to help uh, everyone so that might be the the place to put to put that um, initially perhaps yep i put hayden's comment there already thanks for that uh chat asked something if you're saving it for the end does it leave ample time to discuss <clears throat> No, yes and no, uh, like you should have a few minutes left at the end. I tend to ask it only when there's a bit of time left. Like if there's, if there was a complete rush to go to the agenda, it's not a good time to ask. And then if it's a big topic, at least it, it came out of them and now you can make a note for the next meeting. Uh, so the important thing is that you have the start of that thread that they fess up, they fess up or that they start talking about what's, what's really uh, bothering them or what's on top of their mind. I got a question for everybody on the line. What does um, does every uh, what I've been doing? You know, I, I generally meet with my guys once a week. We have a pretty set agenda. You know, reviewing pipeline and things like that, plus other things that they put on the agenda. But I usually do use the first few minutes of the meeting as a bit of a coffee chat. You know, for example, Mike Walsh is a big Tour de France fan, so am I. So we <laughs> probably use the first ten minutes to to catch up on the latest happenings in the tour. It just kind of you know, and then we ease into the agenda. Um, so I'm kind of using the one-on-one -on -one as a bit of a, a double up as a coffee talk and, a, and then go into the agenda. Does anyone else do that? I yeah, do. I do a bit of that. Yeah, I think, you know, it's part of the relationship development as well with, the, with your team. Um, and so, you know, to focus a little bit on the personal as well, understand what's going on with them and their lives and, you know, talk about shared interests, uh, as you say, Hayden. So yeah, I think that's an important part of, of one-on-ones. It doesn't work well with everyone though. That's what I've experienced. <laughs> exactly. Um, I, uh, I, it wouldn't surprise you that I, I don't spend a lot of time on it. I do it a bit, uh, but I found out there's, there's one, uh, there's one, I can't say anything more. I don't want to identify anyone, but uh, where I was kind of, there was so little like chat that I, I was kind of, that, that I want to train them on their ability to um, to do it. So now, now I'm, I'm instituting required small talk at the beginning of our meeting. So uh, that was, I was, want to share that anecdote. <laughs> Man and I feel for you. It's not, it's not for everyone, the one-on-one -on -one stuff or, or the, the small talk stuff. Uh, I have one question uh, that I wanted to ask the group. Uh, I, don't know if I don't know I don't actually know how many other teams have this, but uh, so I have two uh, contractors and they work very few hours compared to a normal full time person, uh, and so I only schedule their one on ones uh, monthly and want to see just because it, you know uh, they're they're. 
they're only doing one day a week. So monthly seemed like the right time frame for, for that kind of one-on-one. -on -one. And I wanted to see if how, uh, how many other pe people have contractors that do uh, lower frequency one-on-ones. I think for me, it, it's, it is dependent on the work, um, you know, that the people are doing and also sort of what is needed, you know, to effectively um, support them. So you know, I think as Sid mentioned that, you know, some extreme cases, you have daily stand up kinds of meetings, um, other cases, it's weekly, others, you know, it's bi weekly. So and I think in the uh you know contractor um with limited hours that can make sense i think some of it too is you know trying to assess what they need to you know to feel properly supported right so if they feel disconnected because they're only talking to you once a month you know that can be problematic so you know it can also be a you know 10 minute check-in right um versus yeah. you know, a formal one-on-one -on -one, um, as well so i think it's a little bit you know feeling it out see sort of what you feel like they need and you know is, is comfortable and helpful um for them but i do think you know there are many cases where you know a weekly is is not needed and also I, the other thing is like you know looking at the flip side is we're all so busy right and you know it's it's a half hour block or an hour block you know on their calendar and so you know also being sensitive to you know the work they need to get done so to the point of visit weekly bi-weekly etc I like uh, Cortland's suggestions. How are you as a person? How's your work? How's the team? Do you, Cortland, do you put that explicitly on the agenda or is this stuff you ask? Is this like in the area of the question, how can I make your life better? That you ask it a bit more structured or how do you do this? I tend to not structure it um, too formally. Like I don't tend to write it down in, in the uh, agenda of a one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I find it, it comes across um, as it's intended, which is um, authentic, uh, more effectively if it's not like written into the, the agenda. Um, but uh, I, I feel like it's a, a good progression to just, you know, check in with, with the person as, as a human, um, then go over work stuff, and then get into, I think, the most difficult to talk about topics, which, which we were kind of discussing earlier, which are often um, easier to do at the, the end of a meeting. Um, once, you know, the cadence has gotten going and, and, and you know, all, all of that. And I, I think that when there is inevitably issues with people um, and kind of challenges in terms of working with other people and, and that sort of thing, um, it's, it's best to keep that at the, at the end to talk about like how the, the overall team is doing or, or how work as it relates to working with other people is going. So you save these questions for the end? I save the uh, kind of like questions around um, how, wor how work is going with other people to the end. Um, so not those, those three questions. I, I tend to open a meeting with checking in um, on the person, not you know, their, their work or them as an employee, but them as a, a human. Um, and then I spend most of the, the meeting discussing work and like, you know, um, kind of tactical agenda points. And then the end of the meeting, checking in on like, hey, you know, do you, do you need things from other people? Um, have people made commitments to you that they haven't upheld? You know, things like that to get people talking about how uh, it's going working with other people that they need to collaborate with. Can I ask a question um, to the group that's here, particularly for um, managers who've come in to new teams that have already been working together? Do you have any um, sort of tips or advice um, for people who might be coming into GitLab in, that, in a similar situation?
I, I'll add my two cents because I'm in the same situation where I've been placed as a manager over a team that I wasn't previously um, and then coming into GitLab and what I used before. I think that the most important part in the leadership side of things is setting and understanding expectations. So not just them understanding the expectations of the management group, but management understanding the expectations of the individual. And I think if both of those things are met initially <clears throat> or understood clearly at the beginning, the relationship with each of the employees that you manage will increase a lot faster than it would if you just went into a situation saying, this is how things are going to be moving forward and not necessarily understanding each other. Because like Cortland had mentioned earlier, everybody is so different <laughs> in how we approach our conversations and the needs of each individual is so different in every role. So that's just my two cents. Yeah, I, I just wanted to say uh, coming into UX, uh, the same thing, I mean, uh, especially with, with Tori in place who had done such an amazing job just overseeing everything and keeping things going and making sure that um, I let her know that I still needed her support and, and that uh, the team could still look to her for support, that it wasn't like, I, here I am and I'm taking over and, and everybody needs to do what I say now. It was much more of a, hey, I'm here to be part of the team and let's talk about how things have been going, how you want them to go um, and kind of work together towards that. And, I found that uh, it, it's been a really wonderful experience so far. Um, Martin, you had a couple of points. Well, by the way, I thought both suggestions by Chad and Sasha were great. Uh, Chad, I wrote your one down literally. I'm going to include it. Um, Martin, you said a couple of points. I think Lee posted something in the chat. If you have your points, I can add them uh, as well. I'll post them. I'll do a big, cool. I'll do a big merge request that we can discuss uh, next time we meet uh, with uh, with what we learned. Um, any, what what should we talk about next time? Um, I I think that. Um, what is expected of you as a leader was an interesting one that Hayden brought up. Um, but feel free to shout out what, uh, what we want to do. I would really like to, to hear, maybe that's a bit too far away, but uh, I would really like to hear how, how uh, to handle, um, uh, how to recognize and handle underperformance in time before it becomes a problem. Aha, that's one of the hardest things in the world. Um, what do other people think? I think that's a good topic. Cool. I wish I would do that uh, for the next meeting. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Um, I think in terms of the frequency of these, I think we'll probably try to stick to every two weeks because I know you, you every, everyone um, is obviously very busy being managers and also having your day-to-day -day, uh, jobs uh, as well um, so I will look at calendars and I'll move the time because I know um, not everyone can make it and we are going to record these as well and I'll be sure to post um, the link for the recording um, another thing I'd like to ask as well is that it would be great if we could get some other speakers um, I'm very happy to facilitate and help with preparation and content and things like that but it would be great to have and I'm kind of speaking to directory level people and above but if anyone else wants to jump in and speak um, that would be really great so that it's not all one person doing all the talking um, so I will be on the hunt in a, in a good way um, for, for speakers 
Yep. I, 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 I think the format of the meeting is going to be, these are the times that I was too late in identifying underperformance. And this is what I learned because, uh, at least for me, that's, uh, that's, that's kind of how you learn. Uh, it's, it's a super hard subject. So if people have obviously anonymized, uh, stories to share, it would be great if we can get a few people that tell like what they learned from this harrowing case, um, in five minutes or something like that. So please do chime in. Uh, it's about leadership. We expect some leadership. Um, and I thought this was a really good session. I am so proud of everyone participating. I'm very thankful for Abby, your help organizing. Um, and I hope it, uh, I hope it was useful and looking forward to seeing you uh, during the next session. Thanks everyone. Thank Thanks you. everyone. Thank, Thank you. you.